In this video, I'm going to be talking all about bookkeeping in private practice and how you can process your revenue and your expenses on a month by month basis. I'm going to be using my Soul Trader bookkeeping template, which you can download from my website to show you how you can do this. If you're interested in purchasing that, you can head to the link in the description. So what we're going to do is jump into my computer so I can show you how to do this. OK, so now I'm going to show you how you can actually do your bookkeeping on a monthly basis. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that using my Soul Trader bookkeeping template. So I'm going to show you how to do it on my template. But you can create this yourself or you can purchase it from my website. I'll leave the link in the description below. OK. So when you first get the template, what you want to do is download it and then you want to create a copy. So have the template by itself and then create a copy and save it as the actual year. So the first thing we're going to do is change the tax year and put that in as 2021-2022. And then what you're going to do is put in the bank balance brought forward. This is the only one, the one in blue, that you need to do. All the rest are going to auto sum for you. So it is from the first of each month, but on when you first start, the tax year is going to be from the 6th of April. So whatever your bank balance was on the 6th of April, that's what you want to put there. So I'm just going to put zero. So we're just going to pretend this is a completely new bank account. But it, it doesn't matter whatever your bank account was. Just put that amount in there because then all the auto sums are going to work out for you. Everything in this section here is your incoming. So what you want to do is any income you've made, you want to put that in the correct cell. So, for example, in April, we're going to put how much counselling revenue we earned in this one here. There's a space for other because you might do workshops. There might be other things you do. I've also got a capital investment and any bank interest that you earn. So you can use all these different lines. You can also split things out. You could have things like um, self-pay versus medical insurance so that you can see the difference that you're getting in those two sections. So you can add in lines as you want. So you could literally just right click, insert a line and put in, for example, medical insurance. So you could have that there if you wanted and just delete. And this is going to auto sum everything in this section. So you don't need to touch any of the auto sums. And everything in this section here is your outgoings. So everything that is tax deductible. So what you want to find out is everything that is going to be an allowable expense, which means that you can put it in this section here and you can have that as tax deductible revenue. So you're going to want to put that in this section here and then that is going to be tax deductible. And then we've just got this section here, which is your income adjustments and any tax and NI um, national insurance payments that you make. So these are not tax deductible if you pay them from your account. So obviously when you transfer money to yourself, like to your own normal bank account um, to pay your bills and things like that, that needs to come out of into this section here because it's money out of your account, but it's not a tax deductible fee. And also if you make tax and NI payments directly from your business bank account, which you can do, you're just going to put that in this section here as well. And that's going to um, take it out correctly. And then this section here, you are going to want to put the actual bank balance carried forward because we want to make sure that that matches up. And I'll show you that once we've done a month's expenses. So this is the main page. This is where you'll be able to get what your total revenue was for the year, what your total operating costs were for the year, and also the profit, which is what you're going to report to um, HMRC for your self-assessment so that you can you know, do your, do your self-assessment. Um, in the other tabs, we have one tab for each month and you are going to put your expenses on there. And then what it's going to do is it's going to bring it into this spreadsheet here. So it all adds up for you. So you don't need to worry about, you know, doing any sums. We have two tabs for April because we have one from the 6th to the 30th for the first part of the year. And then at the end of the year, we want an April so that we've got the 1st to the 5th so that we are including all of the tax period in there. And then I also have a category tabs here so that we can have all the different types of categories that the expenses can go under. I think this is an exhaustive list, so you should be able to find a category for everything you need. If not, you can use a question mark if you're not quite sure which one it goes under or you can insert a new one. Um, what I would suggest is just getting in contact with me if you want to insert one, uh, because there's going to be some complicated sums <laughs> to do. So. Um, 
I can do that for you. But you shouldn't need to. So now what I want to show you is how you can actually do your expenses for a month. So what you want to do is go to your bank account and you want to download a CSV file um, of your bank statement from the 1st to the end of the month. So I'm going to do April, so I'm going to do it from the 6th to the 30th of the month. And this is kind of what it's going to look like. You might have it in a different order. You might have additional columns, but this is really what you need. You need the date it came in what it was and how much it was for or how much um, came out of your account. So you can delete anything else. What I also want you to do is make take note of your bank balance on the last day of the month. So for example, with this one, it's the 30th of April. So you want to take note and write down, so I've put it here, your actual bank balance at the end of the month. So then what we want to do is we want to put that here and then it wants to match up with this one here. So we'll do that at the end and I'll show you how that works. OK, so I'm going to go to my April tab and I'm also going to go back to my April bank statement. And the first thing I'm going to do is going to copy this row and I'm going to paste it again. I'm going to make this row red like that. And then what I'm going to do is in this row, is this, yeah, so we'll put this here income and we'll put here outgoings. OK. So what we want to do is in the outgoings tab, we're going to delete anything that came in. So anything that doesn't have a minus number. So I'm just going to go through and do that. And then in this column, which is the income column, we're going to delete anything with a minus number. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. OK, once we've done that, I'm going to just auto sum. So I'm going to do equals sum, open bracket, and then I'm just going to grab all of the data. And I'm going to do the same for this one here. Just make this one red. And as you can see, that's summing up all that. So you can see the income for April was 4495. And what came out was 2272.37. So the first thing we're going to want to do is put the income onto the spreadsheet. So the income was 4495. Now, I just want to check if there was any interest so I can separate that out. I don't think there was any bank interest. No. So 4495 was the total. So I'm going to put that there. 4495. Okay, so you can see it's starting to populate the spreadsheet and have some, you know, auto sums going on there. Just make sure that was the correct amount, 4495. Okay, fine. And then what we're going to want to do is put our expenses on here. So I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet. So the first expense was on the 7th and it was £3.40 at Amazon. So I'm going to do the 7th of the 4th. The item I'm just going to do was notebooks. The category is going to be an office supply physical. The supplier was Amazon and it was for £3.40. Now, what I want you to do is make sure that you put it as a positive number, not a negative number. So although it's come out of your account, um, all the auto sums are worked out based on the totals that, that came out as a positive. So we want to keep them. Don't put a minus on there. OK, so once I've done that, I'm just going to give that a little tick like um, added, for example. And then the next one was bank charges for 25.25 on the 7th. So we've got bank charges, 25.25. The category is going to be bank charges and the supply would be the bank. So uh, let's say I'm banking with Stalin, although there aren't bank charges to Stalin, but let's just put that there, for example. That's added. OK, and then we're just going to go through and add all of these figures on to the spreadsheet. OK, so once you have transferred all of the information from your bank statement to the spreadsheet, you'll be able to see here that it will all add up for you and it should match up completely. So we've got one, two, seven, two pound thirty seven. And over here we've got. Uh, 227 £2.37 and that's because a thousand pounds worth of that was for a salary so if we just grab this information you can see it's 1272.37 so that's correct so then what we want to do is move the salary on to the spreadsheet as well so the salary is going to go on this column here and we're going to put our salary in so our income adjustments was a thousand pounds and there we have all the information so as you can see 
um, the spreadsheet has grouped the information together and added it up on to this spreadsheet here. So for example, we have online office expenses at £26.99 and that's because we have Zoom and we have signable as online office expenses and it's taken that and grouped it together and add it, added it up. So now you can see exactly what you're spending in each different area. So how you would want to make sure that this is completely right is because what you want to do is add in your actual bank balance carried forward. So I'm gonna go back to my spreadsheet. I'm gonna just make this black for example so I can see it so it's 222263 so based on me having nothing in my account when I started to all the income and all the outgoings my bank balance at the end of the month was 222263 so I'm going to put that on there 222263 and as you can see this and this matches 100% so now we know exactly what's come in and out of our bank has been transferred successfully onto the spreadsheet, onto the bookkeeping template, 100%, and it matches up. And that's how you know that you've done all of your sums correctly. So that would be how you do your accounting, your bookkeeping on a monthly basis. And by doing this, you'll be able to see year to date what your business is earning. You'll be able to see what you're spending on a monthly and annual basis. You'll also be able to check your annual profit and loss so that you can kind of like compare month to month how your business is doing and that would be how you do your bookkeeping in private practice okay so that was how to complete your bookkeeping on a month by month basis using my sole trader bookkeeping template if you would like to get your hands on that you can use the link in the description below thanks so much for watching